afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the conference of Hope for Prayer. Today is Wednesday, April 6th, 1.30 p.m. here at Mackey Auditorium. This is panel number 3551. My name is Lawrence Anderson. I'm the moderator. And the panel's name is So Many Guitars. So that's kind of interesting. So many yes. <laughs> So many possibilities. So I have a, a great honor to introduce our four panelists. I will say that, uh, in case you guys are wondering, Gooding was not able to make this panel today. Uh, it, he had a conflict that was unavoidable. So we still have these four guys, and it's going to be very fun. <laughs> so uh, uh, closest to me is James Viator. Uh, James is really happy to be here. Uh, his day job is as a constitutional attorney, I believe. Uh, but he, is, he still plays in a New Orleans band uh, back home. Uh, next is David Grim, Grinspoon. Dave. <laughs> David's been playing music for a long time, as well as looking for life in the universe. Uh, and he has a new book coming out. He, Ask me to plug. Earth in the hand, hands of humans. When, when is that going to be released? December. December. Look for it. Tom <laughs> Rotella is next, a uh, longtime musician. <laughs> also thrilled to be here. And finally, uh, David um, Wilcox. David is uh, so determined to play some song about aliens that I, I have a feeling maybe I've got the, uh, the name tags reversed. <laughs> In any case, I think these guys are going to play some music, take some questions, and so I'm going to turn it over to them. You guys enjoy yourselves. Hi. We have an astrobiologist on our panel. Come on, the CWA. Woo-woo! <laughs> Oh, I am so grateful. Okay, so listen to this. Ah, oh, that changes my heart already. There is something about a guitar. I mean, it saved my life. I didn't even know I had a heart. And then suddenly there was this simple sound in my lap that said, hey, Dave. And I said, Dave. Yeah, what? You could feel like this. And I said, nah. And it said, yeah. Where do you think it's coming from? Well, it's the song, right? It's the cool guitar riff, right? No. Nah. I looked. Hello. There's nothing in there. What is it that stirs my heart so much? What is it that makes me think not only could I get the chords right, I could get my life right. A tiny little microcosm, an oasis of perfection. You open its case of plush, but you don't hurry. Because before you turn that top to open to this other dimension, you have to realize that you have to be ready for where it could take you. You don't just want to play what you know. You want it to tell you where you could go. So I have a simple song about seeing life in its depth and wonder. And of course, since we have an astrobiologist, it starts and ends pretty galactic. So join me in this simple sound. A tiny little planet swirling through the stars in a traffic jam of orbits, Jupiter and Mars, dodging down the beltway, driving way too fast, with the searchlights of the galaxy, twinkling from the past. 
at the edge of where it's turning going faster as it spins there's a view into the darkness where emptiness begins a tiny little planet a backyard with a hedge we were safe there in the middle view is from the edge like the ones up on the towers I really feel it sway when they're dashed against the railing and the railing breaks away and they're hanging by the wreckage and they feel it start to give if they had the time to tell you, uh, they could tell you how to live. When the movie's over and we're back out on the street, it rained while we were in there, so it shimmers at our feet of the skyline sparkling above and so we ride up to the top floor falling more in love Tom take us there <laughs> Before we join back into the lyric, do you have the characters so far? I mean, it is galactic at the start, but it's just one of those movies that makes you appreciate things like gravity. They come out of the movie and they see that it has rained and the sparkle in the pavement of the lights of the city. They have to find a skyscraper they can get to the top of. Why not? They just came from this cliffhanger movie, so of course they have to find a place where they can look down and feel that danger again. Oh, they're in love. Of course they're in love, but it's more than that. They want to know that they're in this sweet spot. So they find the skyscraper, and they get on the elevator. That's where we left them off. They'd just gotten on the elevator, right? And they're headed up. Do they make it to the top? No, there's another verse before we get to the top. What happens next? <gasps> Let's see. I think the elevator opens. An old man with a cane. He steps in kind of slowly and winces with the pain. A lady with the memory to see that dress you wear in a fashion so familiar is trying not to stare. Why is he trying not to stare? Well, because because you look like his first love when he could run for miles she wore a dress just like yours now it's back in style and he can see the beauty that you cannot perceive until you earn the eyes to glimpse it just before you leave it. The balcony is bending, it will take our breath away. 
The fall is never ending, but it's here we want to stay. The precipice of darkness, our toes right on the ledge. We were safe back in the middle, but the view is from the edge. A galaxy of stardust, nothing but a wisp whirling through the darkness into the abyss. A tiny little planet, a backyard with a hedge. We were safe there in the middle. view is from the edge. The view from the edge. Hey, that's why we come to the CWM. So we can be right at that place where there needs to be a note. I don't know what it is. I'm going to put my finger here and see what happens. And then there's harmony. Oh, guitar. Guitar. The best way to find out what happens next is to listen to the silence of someone. Oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> well, now that we heard a song about astrobiology, I feel like I should give a lecture about uh, music in the cosmos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't. Could I could. You. It's, an, could interesti you, it it's an interesting topic, but we're here to play guitars. <laughs> you got anything? All right. I, I have nothing, but I'll do something. Um, we ought to get... Uh, That's what humans do. Yeah. That's the whole um, so, um, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I would like to say it's very brave of um, David and Tom to be up here playing with the two of us because it's easy, it's easy for them to play with each other. I mean, am, you know, professionals know what other people are going to do, but, like, they're, they're up here with us amateurs and, like, like probably... You know, anything could happen. So thank you guys for being brave. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I'm a scientist, but I've, I've played music all my life, and it's uh, been something that kind of um, enriched and diverted me and uh, stretched out other uh, capacities of my mind and let me escape from being a completely uncool nerd when I was in high school. Um, uh, well, I mean, maybe I was anyways, but at least I thought. I was cool, which is really all that matters, right? Um, and um, then I played in a bunch of rock bands and folk things and stuff. And then when I was in grad school, I actually, um, in, in Arizona, I actually got very involved in playing with a reggae band called Shagnati Dread and toured with them and recorded with them. And that was a whole other realm to my existence. Um, and then after grad school, I went to Zimbabwe and got really involved in uh, African music, which I love to play different kinds of African thingies. And um, that's, uh, again, been sort of a nice uh, sidelight to me. Now, I don't really have anything to play for you guys because I don't really, I'm not like a um, singer songwriter. I, I, I mostly write things to play with, with other people. But I, it occurred to me that, and, and I just showed these guys backstage, there's this one little riff that um, is part of a song, and the song actually has changes, but we could just do, uh, I could show you a little bit just to give you an idea of some of the stuff I do in these guys. It's pretty easy to play along. So this is something um, that I wrote when I was playing with this band in Tucson. Um, it's called Tabula Rasa. And uh, yeah, well, the song is slightly more than this, but uh, there's, a, there's a fun little uh, three chord jam that we could do a little bit of that's, uh, and it's got 
sort of a South African feel. It goes something like, uh, so the basic part is like. And there's another part that goes. Just feel free. Sir. Any language spoken, the fire is still a fire. Any language spoken, the night is still so cold. Any language spoken, the music will communicate all that needs to be said when we gather around the fire. And as we hear the music coming, we hear the drums begin. Sure enough, our bodies know and welcome us right in. They move in synchronicity and we don't have to think And the music takes us home when we were out on the brink But suddenly we find ourselves right home again here Speaking to each other loud and clear So many guitars and yet one song So many ideas yet we think along we come along find our way we listen in as if to say there's all these songs yet to sing let's see what the night will bring 
I'm a tabula rasa. I'm a tabula rasa. And I'm a tabula rasa. I'm a tabula rasa. And I'm a tabula rasa. Well, I'm a wild man. I'm a tabula rasa. And I'm a baby boy. I'm a tabula rasa. I can't hold I down, I'm tabula rasa. No, cause I get this crazy feeling. Wanna bounce around, wanna bounce around this room. Wanna kick the walls of this womb. Don't wanna talk no more. Wanna get down on the floor. Ding and cream until the morning comes. I'm gonna beat it to you on a beat. Go to a G wooden drum, to an A. That's all song. <laughs> Every piece of jam. <laughs> Wow, awesome. <laughs> that, yeah, that was a, sort of a song called Tabula Rasa that was uh, recorded in Tucson by a band called Humba that you will never, ever be able to find a recording of unless you raid my house. And isn't that great <laughs> that there are still songs that you can't find? Because everything else is, you know, oh, there it is on YouTube, you know, right. the one you've been looking for for 20 years. But some songs, oh, I'm still looking for some songs. <laughs> so nice. And um, can you hear? Is it? I'm speaking in the. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, I wanted to say one thing. With I, I'm a big fan of David Wilcox, and this is the first time I've got to meet him. I've been, and uh, he's one of the most incredible singer-songwriters on the planet, as you probably know. And. Um, I have to say, I'll never open my guitar case the same way again. <laughs> it, was, it is a ritual. It is. And you know, I, as you were talking about this, I, I have my grandfather's guitar, which is the first guitar I ever played. And when I open that case, it's still the same smell from 1950-something. Yes, yes. 
and it's the first guitar I ever touched, and it's not even the same case, but boy, you open it up, and every guitar has yeah. a smell of that wood, yeah. and it's just, mm -hmm. it's the sense of it, and it's such a, um, I had another experience, I play a lot of uh, solid body guitar, electric guitar, uh, which more rock uh, style guitars, and one of the things I noticed, uh, and I, after all these 60 years of playing guitar, I just noticed this a couple weeks ago, when you're even playing a solid body guitar, the real good ones vibrate. Yeah. You yeah. know, so when you play guitar, you have this thing against your body. Yeah. And it vibrates with you. And if it doesn't have it, it's almost impossible to play. Mm. And I, because a lot of the new technology, they're coming out with these very solid classical guitars, and they're all basically can't play them. Wow. You feel that, David? I mean, you have a... There is something so wonderful, uh, having your sternum right there be the resonator. And, you know, I like to say, yeah, the guitar is sort of empty. It's got a hole in it. But, you know, hearts are made that way. And all the better to resonate. So I think the guitar and the heart connected by the sternum, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, just a little inside guitar stuff. <laughs> I'm going to play... Um, I think I'm going to do, um, you know, jazz is kind of a funny thing. I, I meet people a lot, and you say the word jazz, and two things happen. Either they look absolutely frightened or intimidated. And then they go, like, well, you know, I don't understand jazz. And it's, there's nothing to understand, really. I mean, it's like any music, like, you know, we play this African music, or David sings a song or anything. It's whatever moves you. It's kind of like the whole wine food routine, you know, whatever kind of grabs you. So even as complica complex as jazz gets sometimes, and frankly, some of the more complex stuff, I can't listen to myself. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I get a little confused. Mm -hmm. So I'm going um, I'm gonna, you know, a lot of jazz, a lot of the jazz thing is taking pop tunes and uh, making them into jazz songs. So one, one of the classic, this is just something I thought of, seeing we're here and we're talking. If you, you know, a lot of the jazz songs are very swing, you know. Um, Jazz feel. But a lot of these tunes that became famous by Miles Davis, um, you know, by, by Blackford, all these, they started off as show tunes that were written by George Gershwin and all these guys back then. And if you hear the songs, they're like. And you just think, how the hell did these guys take these songs and turn them into these incredible, comp you know, improvised compositions? So anyway, a lot of this was like basically in corny show tunes that became jazz classics. So I'm going to take a song that's not um, a corny show tune. It's a Beatles tune, actually. actually. And this is a jazz arrangement I did on this. <laughs>
gonna make up a verse about like all the lonely guitars you see them line the walls all the lonely guitars they're silent at night in the music store waiting for someone to come by and shield their eyes to see inside the glass and dream of taking one home. <laughs> yeah, check, check, check. yeah, looking in the windows like a right. is, this, is this thing on? Can y'all hear me? Get this baby on. It's time to get funky in here. So this is the, uh, is this thing on? Can y'all hear me? All right, this is the peasant music portion of the show. So you're expected to get up and dance and fill the aisles. So we're going to do some Louisiana French music right now. And I'm going to show you, uh, there's five different kinds. Everybody thinks they're just Cajun music or Zydeco in Louisiana. There's actually five kinds of French music in Louisiana. I'm going to show you two. Start off with a Cajun song and then do a New Orleans rock and roll Creole rhythm and blues song. And uh, I'm going to get a little help on some of these. But first of all, I'm going to start with the Cajun song. Called uh, Le Dupa Grand Unis, the Unis Two Step. And I want to dedicate this to my sister. <laughs> right out there. She's a belle petite fille de Grand Unis. She's a pretty little girl from Unis, and my brother in law, Ken Allen, will attest to that. There's the key of G. The Unis Two Step. participation song now called A La Ba. It's an old New Orleans Creole jazz song. A La Ba is still how everybody in New Orleans says hello. It literally means hey over there. So the, the lyrics that y'all gotta help me out with, I'm gonna say it and then you sing it back. And don't be shy. Pretend you're drunk on Bourbon Street. Don't be shy. 
So we sing E La Ba. Let me sing back E La Ba. E La Ba. E La Ba Sheri. E La Ba Sheri. Como sa va? How you doing? Como sa va? Ela ba, ela ba, sheri, como sa va? All right, you got it. And that's the whole song. I told you it was going to be peasant music up in the house. All right. Here they go. <laughs> yeah, you heard it, Louie Louie. Ela ba. Ela ba. Moshe cousin, ye leme la cuisine, ye fe gombo, mo mange trop, e sa fe bo malad, e la pa, e la pa, e la pa, e la pa, sa ba, ye tue cochon, ye tue la pa. cha-cha out. They just learned that New Orleans trick over there. When in doubt, cha-cha out. So now we're going to do a song that was actually uh, a top ten hit for Lee Dorsey back in the 60s called uh, Sitting in the La La Waiting for My Yaya. <laughs> and so y'all probably thought that was nonsense lyrics or something. But a yaya is a French dance and, and uh, a la la, is, the la la is the French dance. And ya ya means my little all in all, my, my little everything. So he's saying, I'm sitting in the la la, sitting in the French dance, waiting for my little, uh, little all in all. And Lee Dorsey actually had Creole lyrics that they wouldn't let him use in the studio because they wanted it to go nationwide. And so I'll do the English and then I'll do some of the New Orleans Creole lyrics too. Key of A, good old ska C, rhythm. C, 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 I'm sorry. Thanks for the correction. I get, I get A and C mixed up all the time. That's called a mutation, adenine to cytosine. Well. No, never mind. That's what I get for learning more than one guitar chord. I get confused. <laughs> all right, so good old Scott rhythm and C, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Tom. your fine little legs hanging out your short dress. Get up here in my short dress, gal. Come on down front and dance. Yeah, you right. Yeah, you right. Woo! Yeah, you right, baby. Yeah, you right. For the Yaya Ets. Let's hear it for the Yaya Ets. Woo, yes indeed. When I get back to New Orleans, I'm gonna tell them that mountain air makes it funky up in there. There is a life path that is pursuing knowledge and excellence as Tom has done, learning the fretboard, learning so, so that you, when you hear a note in your head, your fingers know right where it is. And then there is another path, which is the path of open tunings. When you learn all the chords and you know how to find the note you want, how are you ever gonna be surprised? So there's this other philosophy of what you want the guitar to do is not do what you told it, but take you to a place you haven't been before. And that requires open tunings. So what I love about open tunings is that it's like a whole different instrument. And every time you start into a new open tuning, all the chords you know are wrong. So you have to come to the instrument as if not only have you never played it, but maybe nobody's ever played it. It's a tuning that, you know, is a brand new territory. And so it's so fun to go into those territories and get lost. And this is a song about being drawn into being, well, the lyric is written as if it's a song just about a night of romance that opens your heart so wide that your heart is never the same again. But it could also be about a bliss that you feel that changes you forever because you're either going to have to try and forget that that's possible for the rest of your life, which takes a whole lot of medicine, or you're going to have to try and remember that that's possible for the rest of your life, which takes a whole lot of music. So this is a song about all that.
The night I saw her dancing, she moved in liquid music like every song that moved us was the music of her soul. And waking up at sunrise with the sunlight through her window, I pulled aside the curtain far away from home. When she danced, she knew the music Like the waving of a wheat field gives the hidden wind away And I'm so grateful for her beauty And I knew she could not stay Just the fragrance of her memory And the satin and the velvet Time split through a prism And I knew that she was gone But I found the note she'd written If my heart could dare to trust her Through the journey in the darkness She'd be with me in the dawn when she danced, she knew the music Like the waving of a wheat field gives the hidden wind away And I'm so grateful for her beauty Yeah, and I knew she could not stay so there I was. I was just sitting on my yaya waiting for my lala or vice versa. I was waiting to be danced away. And how long would I wait? How long would I wait? Well, the music is trying to say, Dave, if you want to find it, you're going to have to follow. Though you got nothing to go on, though you're in strange territory, you're going to have to set out on this journey and see what you will find. So I stepped out on the sidewalk And I closed the door behind me Following a fragrance That was carried on the wind And I knew I'd never reach her Cause the starlight was the distance But I knew that right beside me Was where she'd always been She'd always been right there. Now when we dance, she moves her right through me. I trust that love is coming to me from the promise that she gave. And I'm so grateful for her beauty. Cause it made my heart so brave that's what it did it made my heart so brave so brave so brave to play what i don't know how to play it made my heart so brave
David Wilcox. Thanks, y'all. I don't know. Four minutes? Are there any guitar players out there? <laughs> okay, this is a wonky question for David. He's like one of the masters of open tunings. So, how do you, do you just plan a tuning or do you? What I do is when there's a song that needs to come out, I will play it every way I can imagine. I start in whatever tuning the guitar is in and I, you know, it kind of moves me, but I think, man, that one chord, it just needs to be better. And I find a way to make, you know, there's one chord in the song that you're sort of waiting to get to. In every song, there's that one chord, you know, ah, that's the chord. And you want to make that chord just absolutely hurt down to your marrow. You want that chord to just, oh, my God. And so you do everything you can, including capos with holes in them and tunings and whatever it takes. Just make that chord as good as it can be. And then figure out how to play the song with whatever you had to do to the guitar. <laughs> That's usually the way I go at it. That doesn't help me at all. <laughs> so should we, should we just like... Uh end with like a Rolling Stone song or something? I don't know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Which one? Like, um... <laughs> Well, I told you once and I told you twice. Somebody's gonna told you twice. Never listen to my advice. You don't try very hard to please me. What you know, it should be easy. Well, this could be the last time. This could be the last time. Maybe the last time. I don't know. Oh, no. Sorry, babe, but I can't stay Feeling like I do today Too much pain and too much sorrow I guess I'll feel the same tomorrow Well, this could be the last song This could be the last time Maybe the last time I don't know Ooh. Oh, no! Oh no, Tom!
Well, I'm sorry, babe, but I can't stay. Feeling like I do today. There's too much pain, there's too much sorrow. I guess I'll feel the same tomorrow. Well, this could be the last time. This could be the last time. Maybe the last time. I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't. This could be the last time. Folks, thank you very much for coming. Big hand for James, Tom, David, and David. Thanks to you guys. What a great, great afternoon.